Excellent, thank you. Uh, just updating the page here. So there is going to be uh, quite a few people watching us. Am I correct? Yes, people are watching us. Okay, I'm just going to turn on my camera. Um, thank you for everyone who uh, came over uh, to indeed the international event, the discussion between uh, Ukrainian and American slash Canadian students, uh, students living in North America. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected us in um, a different way, but in many ways um, it's quite the same. We have to study online. We um, uh, cannot see each other in person. We um, have to get creative um, about the way we do our normal lives, the way we meet and the way uh, we study, work, and all those, all those things are changing right now. And so we thought of um, an idea to uh, come together um, and unite students from different continents and just see how, um, how students have been affected, uh, students in the, from Europe and students from North America. And what do those students think of the future, the future of education, the future of uh, work, um, and uh, just how, how we're going to proceed with online school, um, how we're going to proceed with our lives after after all of this is over. Um, this event is organized by uh, International Association for Political Science Students, IAPS. Um, IAPS is a global organization that um, is meant to connect uh, political science students from around the globe. Uh, and we are organizing this event with the help of um, Canadian Institute for Ukrainian Studies located here in the province of Alberta, Canada. It's a department um, at the University of Alberta in Edmonton. Uh, so I'm just going to share a little bit about uh, IAPS and um, what, what is it all about. So um, IAPS is International Association for Political Science Students. Um, IAPS short, uh, shortly. Um, generally, IAPS is a platform for political science students and students interested in political science issues. So you don't have to be a political science student to join. You just might as well be interested in global affairs, international relations, and general uh, uh, political and generally political interest in political science as a study. Um, our association is international, um, which is not just a name. We are active on all continents. It is politically independent, so we are not sponsored by any political party uh, or, or government. It's also nonprofit. It's not making any money. Well, it, it is making money, but all the money go into the um, uh, back back to the organization to uh, run the activities. So not, none of the currently all all workers of associations are of the association are volunteers. It is student run. Most of our volunteers are students, either completing their bachelor degrees, a master's or PhD. And IAPS aims to have global impact in the political science sphere. That's it. That is the ultimate goal of IAPS. Um, IAPS has three pillars, uh, which is IAPS events. Uh, that's exactly what we're doing right now, global uh, political science gathering. Um, Again, we are reimagining re -imagining the way we do it because usually we would have academic conventions, um, uh, regional conferences, study trips, all of that is came to a halt. Uh, no more travel, um, no more gatherings uh, because of the virus. I believe it will come back one day, but currently we have to um, get creative and do things different way. Uh, so this event is part of a part of our activities. Um, this is this is what we do regularly. IAPS Academic. We have a few uh, few journals. We have a, a Politicon journal. It's a peer-reviewed uh, political science journal. Uh, we have a few blogs uh, run by students. We send delegations to various conferences, and we have a variety of research committees that any student can join. And the third pillar is career development. So any student that um, joins IAPS uh, benefits greatly from being in it by the variety of uh, connections and services we provide. Um, and I will talk about it more about it later. 
Uh, so why would you join an apps? There's a lot of benefits that come with it. Um, it's a priority access to all of our events, um, which are currently not happening in this year, um, but um, yeah, next year hopefully it will come back. Preferential access to the to publishing and to being published in uh, our journals. You can run for IAP selected positions and again work experience. Uh, looks great on resume. Uh, join or create an IAP research committee to research a topic with other students and you can co-publish your work. Again, um, it benefits our students professionally. Um, students, uh, uh, so members of IAPS have voting rights at the IAPS General Assemblies. Um, uh, IAPS members can take part of IAPS delegations. Um, they travel to international political science associations. So that's our partner association, World Congress, ISA Annual Convention, and ACPR General Conference that's in Europe. Um, uh, they also have, um, IAPS members have opportunities to participate in events initiatives of IAPS regional chapters. This is exactly what we do right now. And I will talk more about regional chapters and, um, IAPS members contribute to IAPS advocacy initiatives. So, um, any, any, um, uh, any initiative that is started by students, so there's uh, a lot of them and exactly there, you know, what students care about, whether it's gender equality or. Uh, access to education. Um, there's a lot of uh, advocacy initiatives and we are partnering with different organizations to uh, promote and raise awareness about um, important topics of the day. Um, what are IAPS regions? I talked about regional chapters. Uh, regional chapters function on every continent. Uh, my chapter, I'm the regional chair of USA in Canada and IAPS Ukraine is from Europe. Uh, each chapter is pretty active and also has various activities going on and specifically uh, very active countries. So there are um, different branches. Uh, if, uh, so a country can start a branch uh, of IAPS if, if they have enough people and they want to be um, active and um, do uh, various activities within IAPS. They don't have to uh, just do it on the national level or I mean on the regional level, they can do it just within the country. So that is IAPS Ukraine. Um, I believe Alexi was supposed to, Alexi Kachenko was supposed to join. I'm not sure if he is here. Um, he was supposed to talk about IAPS Ukraine. Um, is Alexi here? Or... Yeah. Okay, great. Go ahead. I can't leave organizing moments for the last moment for the start of our event. And now. Of uh, our organization of uh, branch. So let's start. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alexi, do you have anything special to mention about IAPS Ukraine? Uh, I okay, have already created. Uh, of uh, IAPS Ukraine and I am now I try I'm trying to start it okay. mm, can I start the demonstration of our presentation yes you can uh, yes you can my correct thank you very much And young researchers from all over Ukraine who have been in. United Science uh, 29 year by our common admiration of political and political science. And our goal is to develop political science side by side with IAPS Global and its branches like IAPS Canada and USA, uh, which is our maternal organization. 
And if you want to share your thoughts on the development of political science, uh, research political processes and institutions, participate in national and international events, publish your works, uh, and get many other opportunities, welcome to IFCK. The, there is uh, our <coughs> big community and you can see many of uh, us who are, who are here now in this photo and uh, we are open to make our family bigger uh, every year of our activity. So our informational resources we have uh, and we have already created uh, active informational resources on Facebook, on Instagram and on Telegram and every of every our resource uh, is open to new followers, to new members and we are uh, we are all always ready to ask uh, questions about these resources and uh, we are always ready to help you to follow to you. And uh, why you can be interested in becoming a member of IFC Ukraine. And give to you uh, first the free participation in events and the local at the local and national levels for have previous they spoke about and I uh, Thank you, Alexi. Um, I'm just going to finish. I'm um, here. Uh, um, so this was this was IAPS Ukraine. Hmm? Uh, I don't, Alexi I don't Ukraine. Uh, your connection is so slow and it's really difficult to actually hear you. So Alexi Zagreba will continue speaking, maybe just using your uh, PowerPoint presentation, just presenting. Uh, is it okay? Okay. Yeah. Yes. It, it is yeah, no it problem. Is, because because we didn't hear half of you what you what you said. Um, so oh. yeah, if if there are any people watching from Ukraine on Facebook, uh, this Can is an organization to join. And if you have any friends um, who would be interested in this, um, uh, they definitely send them uh, send them the links that Alexi presented. And I believe they will, that regional chapter will continue to grow larger and we'll have even more opportunities for its members. Um, so one last thing about IAPS, um, it does cost money to join. Um, I believe, uh, I hope that everyone, was, everyone watching this presentation on Facebook was, um, has already been convinced by this point uh, to buy a membership. Membership will cost only 15 euros a year, which is about 17 uh, American dollars or 22 Canadian dollars, um, which can be purchased as this link. Um, and um, giving a moment to anyone watching uh, live the live stream to snatch a QR code or just follow the link, or it can be purchased just uh, if you follow the um, go to iops.org uh, website, and you can find the links and purchase your membership and get involved with us. Um, that was the, my presentation about IAPS. Um, this is just a small, um, uh, small, fra small fraction of what we do um, in order to understand uh, the deep uh, and vast IAPS network. Um, you should definitely join us and see what we can offer. Um, thank you for the, uh, thank you for listening. And I will now um, pass the microphone to Alexander, our moderator for the, of the event. He's uh, 
research coordinator at the um, Canadian Institute of Ukrainian Studies. Um, and he does uh, have uh, many other involvements, uh, but he is an avid uh, scholar and he will be moderating our discussion today. Uh, is it problem to give uh, opportunity to my colleague to uh, uh, promoting of special moments of IPS uh, in two sentences, no, not more? Yes, Alexei. Who? Alexei Kachenko. Oh, our. Uh, I suppose Alexei is talking about me. Local so. yes, organization okay. of IFC yes. in Kiev National University of Tarasov. So, uh, yeah, about IFC Ukraine, as you have uh, already heard, we are active since two, uh, 2009. And uh, basically, we consider ourselves as the largest uh, political science association in Ukraine. And uh, basically, uh, the most important uh, 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 advantages of joining the IPS Ukraine is the uh, basically possibility of uh, the scientific development of your uh, self as a researcher. We try to give this opportunity to everyone. We try to give the opportunity to uh, engage uh, yourself in the process of uh, Global research of the political science and to uh, the and uh, to give the possibility for our members to uh, join global communities and to uh, study international ideas and approaches on the research. So our main uh, goal in Ukraine, I suppose, and uh, basically also for our Ukrainian viewers at the moment. Uh, for our members, uh, we are ready to provide any uh, needed uh, recommendation letters if it's uh, something useful for you, for your universities maybe, or employees, or any other organizations to whom this may concern in general. So uh, that's basically all. Thank you for the attention. Uh, join IPS. Thank you. Mihailo, thank you for uh, information about uh, your uh, developments and your activities in Ukraine. And uh, first of all, it's an honor for me uh, to be uh, the moderator of today's event. And it's an honor also for the institution. I represent the Canadian Institute of Ukrainian Studies uh, because we deeply involved in different activities to support students. Uh, in their endeavor and uh, studies across Canada, in Ukraine, and also across the globe. So we provide different uh, research opportunities and also grants and scholarships. So I use this also opportunity to tell about our institute that you can visit our uh, website and also explore uh, different options, for, uh, funding options for the students especially for students who are right now masters or on PhD programs. So we have a really uh, good variety of options. So uh, to start to start uh, uh, to start our event, so for, uh, we have a first question uh, for all uh, who already join us on Zoom. And the first question will be actually icebreaker and also uh, we will, I will ask you uh, just briefly, like round, uh, round, round robin exercise uh, to tell you, to tell us your name, where are you from, uh, what university are you a student and uh, what do you study? And also uh, uh, two simple questions. Uh, what was the most challenging for you as a student during COVID-19 and also what positive things you found. So let's start and maybe we will start from the uh, bottom. So uh, uh, Veronika uh, Svitach maybe will start. So Veronika 
Svitech, can you? Uh, yes, hello everyone. So my name is Vernika Svitech. I'm 18 years old and I'm studying political science at the National University of Tereshevchenko in Kiev. What is about uh, studying during quarantine? I think it was a rather challenging thing for me uh, because I am not in Kyiv right now. I live with my parents, with my younger brother, and it was a little bit hard for me uh, to study at all because I had other activities, also job, but my passion for studying was the best thing to motivate. Thank you. Thank you, Veronika. So, Sofia Makohin. Hi, it's so nice to be here. So, uh, my name is Sofia and I study at Ukrainian Catholic University in Lviv, if you know. So, uh, to be honest, uh, this quarantine was kind of challenging for me. And I would say that the most difficult part for me was like lack of communication. So uh, we had uh, our uh, like studying process process organized very well, but I felt like it was very difficult, like mentally. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, the next Alexey Vasilevsky. Yep. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, uh, actually, I have graduated from Tereshevchenko National University of Kyiv this year. And also this year, I have enrolled in master's degree in public policy at University of Saskatchewan in Canada. Uh, it is located in Saskatchewan. Um, uh, so if you talk about uh, uh, like the first problem of uh, COVID-19 um, impacts, so I can say that uh, the crucial the crucial issue for me it was related to like to uh, to time management because sometimes it was quite hard for me to organize myself. And uh, if you talk about positive things, I can say uh, that. Um, it help it helps uh, to communicate in a short period of time without any uh, like uh, time obstacles. But uh, actually, I'm convinced that uh, problems uh, outweigh uh, positive moments. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, um, next, we have. Uh, Mikola Bondarenko. Nicole. Uh, uh, good evening uh, to all my friends. Uh, my name is Mikola Bondarenko, and uh, I'm from the Kyiv region. I'm from the, from the city of Berezan. Uh, that's not far long from the Kyiv, only 75 kilometers. And uh, I'm a student of uh, Taras Shevchenko National University. And uh, except for me, uh, I find uh, only a cons of uh, quarantine time. Uh, to be honest, I uh, even uh, I can't uh, to find uh, a time to to, uh, to have a to have a speech with my friends uh, on telephone. I don't know uh, what I must to speak to him because this never happened during the quarantine, and uh, we even not have any time to speak but uh, there is a one a plus of a current quarantine time because uh, uh, i have a lot of time to read the books that i uh, hadn't uh, that i haven't chance to uh, read uh, during the uh, education time so that's all okay thank you mikola uh, the next nadia kachmar nadia can you hear us Hi everybody, it's a pleasure to meet you all. Uh, so my name is Nadia Kachmar. There's a dog uh, barking outside. Okay, uh, my name is Nadia Kachmar. I study in Lviv in the Ukrainian Catholic University. I study ethic, uh, ethic politics economics program, so it's basically a political science. Uh, so Sofia Makohin here is my group mate. 
Yep. So basically, I really enjoy quarantine time, but I would say that, first of all, for me, um, the lack of communication as well was pretty challenging because in our university, we have this great community. We see each other every day. We cooperate. We uh, make project, uh, projects together. And so it was really hard not to see people anymore, but we got through it really well. We also communicated with each other online. We did a lot of projects, a lot of um, online uh, online lectures and et cetera. So it was okay. Uh, and also for me, the best part was that our university paid for our online courses in uh, Coursera, if you know this platform. And so we we were able to study even more and learn even more. And so it was pretty great. And also I got a lot of free time to think, to read some books, to, um, you know, pick up some new languages or, or something else. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Nadia. Uh, Mikhailo Petrov. Oh, yeah, uh, so basically I've just graduated from the Russian International University of Kiev. I've studied political science there for almost four years. Um, I got my bachelor degree. Uh, so, and now I'm on my way to the start of the program European Interdisciplinary Studies in the College of Europe in Natalin. And uh, about the, there are some words which I would like to say about the education uh, during the pandemic time, uh, during the quarantine. Uh, basically, I can say that I did have some problems with the uh, distant education as a phenomenon, uh, it wouldn't be true, but I had some problems, uh, you know, with the organization of uh, educational process. Uh, I think that uh, in our university, there were several professors uh, whose approach to the organization of distant education was um, not a very appropriate one and they were not interested in, in to encouraging the students to learn more about uh, their subject, but just to send the, them as many home assignments as possible and ask them to write as many essays and uh, research papers as possible. So, and I'm, I don't think that it's, uh, this is something uh, very useful in terms of uh, education. So maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but uh, that's my point of view. Thank you. Thank you, Mikhailo. Uh, Justin Windsor. Justin, can you hear us? Yes, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome, my name is Justin Windsor. I am a student of psychology here at Berman University in Alberta. I have the pleasure actually of attending classes with Alexi and I enjoy my time with him. So thank you for this invitation. The benefits to me personally of dealing with the coronavirus has mostly been that as a lot of the classes here will be going online, I have the ability to very much set my own work life schedule. Most of my classes should be asynchronous, meaning I can learn from them at any point without having to physically be there or at a set time. The disadvantages are that I also work as a residence assistant, helping the students who live here at Berman and due to, the, due to the coronavirus, if all we need is one case and so everything would be shut down and we would spend most of the summer working asking is today the day where we'd all lose our jobs, have to leave and our whole work life balance would be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Justin. Uh, the next we have Ivan uh, Boyarchuk. Ivan, can you hear us? Yes, 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 I can. Greetings. My name is Ivan. I'm a four year student of Taras Shushchenko um, National University of Kyiv, and uh, I'm studying uh, political science. Uh, due to the epidemic, uh, uh, me as a student faced a couple of obstacles. Generally, I found really hard to uh, get a qualified uh, communication with the teachers and the students. And uh, more, moreover, for me, uh, Mm, the main thing uh, in a starting process is uh, uh, to get a feedback from teachers, uh, 
about my uh, fails, about um, uh, about my wins, and about like pluses and minuses of uh, my studying. So I didn't get it. Uh, I I. Uh, I didn't get it, and um, furthermore, as my colleague uh, said, Mikhail Petrov, um, the process wasn't organized really well because uh, it was like a first time, and uh, especially our university wasn't uh, really prepared for this uh, situation. But I have a hope that um, due to epidemic and due to uh, a uh, new trend to distance uh, studying. Uh, the Tarashevchenko University will have some um, progress in that. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Irina Ivanikova. Irina, can you hear us? Irina? Okay, uh, the next one probably will be Yaroslav uh, Teleshun. Yaroslav, can you hear us? Yes, I'm Yaroslav. here. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I am glad to see participants from both continents. Uh, I want to say only a few words because here I represent not a student, but uh, uh, represent from another side of barricades. I am a lecturer in Tarashevchenko National University of Kyiv. So today I want not to just to take a participant in our discussion, but first of all to hear uh, ideas of uh, our students from students from USA, Ukraine, and Canada toward how they want to uh, be in a uh, study process beginning from the first September, because we know that, and I, ha I have a great scare that from the first September we will also have a quarantine and there will be a great restriction towards our classes, towards uh, interaction and communication between lecturers and students. So today I will be like a not active participant, but first of all, I want to see and to hear the ideas of uh, our students toward how they want to deal with professors during our semester this year. Thanks. Thank you, Roslav. But also the question for you as a lecturer. So what did you find the most challenging for you? Because it's actually both sides. Uh, so the problem right now. <laughs> I think the same problem that all professors have is the low level of interaction. Because when you have a lecture, of course, you see uh, a feedback of students during your lecture. You see their eyes, you can hear their questions, their reaction towards some information, towards some examples, etc. But when we are talking about, for example, different uh, platforms, when you have a great number of students, for example, uh, one, for example, uh, political science, when you have 100 students during your lecture, it's very difficult to see, first of all, with the help of this platform, reaction of all students. In the best way, you can see the reaction of 10 or 15 students. So you couldn't uh, first of all, feel this interaction between uh, lecturing and student. And as for me, it's the main problem. Because first of all, when we're talking about study process, it's not only about that we try to view and give them uh, some uh, knowledge. But first of all, it's interaction and try to view and not only knowledge, but first of all, like a part of uh, social capital, about our interaction, about some communication skills and etc. And of course, it's a great depth when we're talking about uh, different platforms and network study. Thank you, Yaroslav. Thank you, Yaroslav. And uh, now I am turning the floor to Artur Borshuk. Artur, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. So now I need to introduce myself. I am Artur Borsuk. I am already third course of political science department, National University of Kyiv, Tarashevchenko. Yep. And my problem is approximately like uh, in as said Mikhail and uh, and uh, Ivan Boychuk and a lot of different problems. But the main problem, as I see, it is the communication between us and our professors. They cannot understand that they, that we can't work uh, 
uh, all day in uh, our computers and our computers uh, cannot understand that they can't work all day by understanding their task and doing their task and a lot of difference like this. Yeah, and uh, there are a lot of fun that, that you called my surname Borshuk because I'm Borsuk and Borsuk, uh, yeah. I need to, yep. That's not a big problem. It will be much, much more bigger problem if you call me Barsuk. So, <laughs> but, um, I apologize. And you know, th this problem, like uh, communicating uh, with students and professors, uh, it, uh, this problem absolutely kill all understanding of uh, uh, our task, of our, I don't know, wh why we still here, why we uh, try to learn uh, something on political science department, because this, this what the, the thing that we is so that this is absolutely, um, I'd say, it, um, uh, it's like they, it's like how, how I say, it, it's hard to say that our professors, they don't care about their work, they only care about their money, and they don't want to understand the main problem of students, you know, they don't want to speak with you, they don't want to show your problems, and a lot of kind of like this. And there are a lot of different professors like this, there are all uh, cathedra of political science, and they approximately half of this cathedra. Yep, I said a cathedra, cathedra, da. But and they have the biggest. They have approximately fifty percent that they have uh, emails and electronic posts. That this that this thing is kill me, and I cannot understand what the hell with this uh, starting. And now it is the it is the biggest problem that they now that they trying to do something they trying to change in their studying they trying to change their connection and communication but it's kind of hard to say you know because I don't know that uh, the the thing that COVID nineteen showed the the, the true uh, work of our professors and they and their understanding of or students, you know, and kind of like that, that's all. <clears throat> Thank you, Arthur. Thank you for your uh, answer. So the next, Artem Olinik. Artem, can you hear us? Yes, I hear you. Thank you, Arthur, for your inspiring and very faithful Dazapani speech. Uh, I thank you for this, but uh, I will be the last one of this uh, Introducing, I am Artem Olinik. I am head of scientific society of the Faculty of Philosophy of Trashachenko National University of Kiev, acting uh, uh, general secretary to IPSS Ukraine and uh, young researchers in the Academy of Political Sciences of Ukraine. Uh, today and uh, for these six months, uh, we all. Um, uh, was uh, at home and prepare for lectures, for seminars, for other um, uh, try to decide these uh, challenges in our um, in our Ruslo, как это будет? In our in our in our street. So uh, I have no exchange in uh, experience uh, in uh, um, exchange of thinkings in exchange of uh, um, so visions so minds uh, like it will be uh, like it be in uh, my university in my auditory uh, i have no um, discussion on the themes of maybe, maybe ethical, so maybe uh, monographies which we try to write. But on the other hand, I have many time to prepare, for example, for a new cycle of election cycle in Ukraine, or maybe for uh, studying myself. So like pluses, like minuses we have in this situation. Thank you, thank you, Artem. And uh, uh, Alexei Kachenko, can you hear us, Alexei? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for addition about not uh, about I have to but about me. But I 
can't uh, separate myself and my life from IFC Ukraine. And I now I, I'm speaking about uh, my life within IFC Ukraine because uh, only this now um, have uh, me. So I am action, acting president of IFC Ukraine uh, from uh, September of uh, 2019. And uh, my one of my predecessors in uh, this in this position uh, was Yaroslav Kuneshun, and uh, I am thankful uh, for him very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to take this position and uh, making everything possible to develop myself. Uh, within uh, IFC Ukraine to develop IFC Ukraine uh, and uh, to give the opportunity to every uh, member of IFC Ukraine to develop himself or herself uh, within our structure. Uh, so uh, now uh, you can see that uh, my efforts uh, have a result and I am very happy about this and now I have to gain a new uh, its uh, international exhibition and activity uh, renew uh, its informational activity and now uh, we and every uh, person of our big family uh, have the opportunity to uh, connect with our colleagues, with you and, and other colleagues uh, uh, all over the world and uh, to publish uh, our works in different uh, editions uh, and different journals and uh, to uh, represent himself or herself to a uh, world of uh, political science science and uh, to world of science and to world at all. Thank you very much and I hope that this uh, speech uh, open our uh, this speech open speeches uh, about uh, this world and situation in this world uh, which uh, uh, have uh, influence to our development, to our educational development and our development within IOPS. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Alexei. And uh, Alexei Zagreba. Alexei, can you hear us? Thanks. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, well, hello, everyone again. My name is Alexei. I'm studying at uh, Bruman University uh, in the province of Alberta, Canada. I'm pursuing Bachelor uh, in International Studies degree. I'm the chairman of uh, 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 USN Canada region within International Association for Political Science Students. I'm also the president of International Studies Club at my university. I'm the co-founder of Global Civilian Foundation located in Cambodia, uh, where we host uh, local model United Nations and will soon be running a, an academic journal and uh, lots of other interesting things for Asia uh, Pacific region. Um, in terms of the quarantine, our university went online in March. Um, it was pretty much predicted we were expecting that to happen. What we did not expect to happen was um, how actually difficult uh, that would turn out for many students to balance their lives at home, at work, maybe part-time jobs, and um, or maybe lose part-time jobs and lose uh, income and study all at the same time. Uh, professors at my university have been gracious enough and gave a lot of extensions, uh, extended deadlines, um, gave, uh, gave us an opportunity to finish our papers. Uh, exams were postponed until later. So I actually uh, finished studying in May instead of April, as usual. The most challenging thing um, was perhaps syncing my um, everyday schedule uh, with everything else I had to do. Um, and getting getting proper feedback from professors and just general adapting to uh, to the new lifestyle and and overall it was a bit difficult to 
pr plan ahead. Uh, a lot of plans, my personal plans were uh, fell apart because of the pandemic. So it's sometimes it is um, psychologically challenging to study and pursue something bigger in the times of uncertainty because it seems like the world is falling apart and um, the collapse is coming, but the collapse is not here yet, at least. Um, there's, there's a lot, I think there's a lot of um, uh, potential ahead of us. We just need to uh, focus on the, on the end goal and not get discouraged. Uh, but this is, I think COVID-19 has enormous impact on well-being and mental health of many people. So I consider that the biggest challenge um, for students. As uh, high school students, so they're finishing up and thinking of whether to go to university, current students, current university students, and those students who have graduated and now trying to find a job in a recession. Um, this is challenging for all of them. Thank you, Alexei. Thank you for uh, uh, your answer. So, for and it's reminder to all our Zoom participants if you have any questions for. Uh, uh, you, the whole audience, so you can post them in the chat session section. So, and also the reminder for our Facebook uh, viewers, if they have uh, some questions uh, for our uh, participants, they can post them under the uh, in the section comment section of our post. But please make sure that you are posting under the original post, not under the repost, because we will not we will not want to see. So, uh, Alexei, you, are, you brought really uh, interesting aspect about the psychological aspect of COVID-19. So, and maybe the next question will be how universities actually are prepared to deal with uh, such a psychological aspect of this COVID-19 and the level of anxiety. And do uh, students feel safe uh, to be on the campuses? So, for who is actually uh, would like to start this conversation and uh, maybe to provide uh, their um, answer for this question? Alexei, maybe we will start with you. Zahrava. Well, the um, problem of the high suicide rates on Canadian campuses were it was a problem before COVID. Um, students, a lot of students, had an anxiety about their uh, about their studies and their future. Um, many campuses I know have addressed the problem by creating. Um, um, certain student success centers, they called, so where students could go get help with um, academic affairs or just simple psychological help. However, this is something on the next level uh, because no, no one can really predict what the future holds. And when students uh, go to see, could go to seek professional help, um, there there is not there is no clear answer about what's going to happen next. Um, uh, right now, the uh, and uh, the additional challenge, or probably the greatest challenge, that it's all online. Um, the school is online, so students have to uh, interact online with professors, and the whole human uh, contact is missing. Uh, the connection, and, um, the connection between people, physical contact, and seeing each other, like actually seeing each other in person. I think Justin Winter would have. Uh, more input uh, on that matter since he's a psychology major. Uh, but I think this is going to, uh, I think he's probably going to agree with me that the COVID-19 pandemic will have um, uh, decades lasting effect on people's mental health as will as social distancing will eventually be over and people will um, go back to communicating each other as, as usual, many, many people's social skills and it will be um, um, not not at their best, at least to say the least. And many uh, many students will experience even probably anxiety anxiety uh, communicating in real life um, because they will be used to uh, doing it online. Thank you, Alexi and Nadia Kachmar uh, have their eyes on hand. So Nadia. Yeah, thank you. Um, so as I said before, our university is pretty much all about communication with each other students with uh, prof uh, professors and et cetera. And so it, it was, at first it was really big challenge for us since nobody was at campus, nobody saw each other. And it was pretty frustrating, am I right? 
yeah okay uh, but um it was really hard but then we kind of um we kind of cooperated with each other and a lot of students organizations they made a lot of lectures some online events where students could you know talk again with each other and feel that community all over again and so also one interesting fact that uh, we have um constant uh, psychological groups that you know um, they do art therapy or some other types of therapy and so they created like online uh, online psychological groups where students could you know gather and then talk about their problems how they feel during the quarantine and so it was really helpful I didn't attend them but I know some students who did and so and they said that you know it was really nice to uh, feel the community again and they were kind of relieved so I would say that our university staff uh, did their best in order to um, in order to feel that community and to students feel comfortable and you know uh, just um, study and you know go on with the situation move on and so it was pretty great. Also, our professors, they were really understanding. And so whenever we had some problems with our deadlines or something else, they totally understood us and they would move deadlines and you know, uh, just um, cooperated with us. So I say that our university um, was pretty great in the quarantine. We will see how our university will be in this uh, upcoming semester. Um, but, you know, now uh, the situation was really great for me. Thank you, Nadia. Justin, Justin Winsor. Thank you. Um, after Alexi mentioned it, I wanted to take a second to think about it. It wouldn't surprise me if during this coming semester, if not beyond, we might see some of the lowest grades across all levels and ages that we might have ever seen. With a lot of content being moved to online, that very much disrupts the learning style of people who need to be there in person, who benefit from being around others, um, especially if, say, if they have a kinesthetic learning style, being very hands-on. The other part of it is, while teachers and instructors have to learn how to teach online, a lot of students also have to learn how to learn online. And a lot of them won't receive that education and so they have to establish their own work-life balance. But if they've never done that, if they're used to just following a, uh, the schedule because they're physically at a school, then they're going to suffer. Thank you, Justin. Do you have other comments or? Well, Justin, I can argue that the school, uh, schools in general, at any level, whether it's elementary school, uh, middle school, high school, university, uh, has never really been adapted to people uh, with different learning styles. It's usually adapted to people who learn uh, better from books um, and by listening to lectures. But if a person has other learning styles, they never, um, they never uh, had a chance to succeed. Uh, maybe do you think this as an do you think the online school would be an opportunity to actually make schools more inclusive to people with all learning styles? I would argue it's certainly possible, but that would probably depend on the initiative of the individual professors, the institutions, and what the uh, at least here in Canada, the provincial and federal advisors what they learn from the situation. In regards to your first point, though, you're absolutely correct that there is very much a bias towards memory retention information instead of just application or things beyond that. Thank you, Justin. Actually, it brings us to the next question about the future of universities and the future of uh, work for 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 force uh, because we know that universities have not changed a lot from 16th uh, century and the COVID-19 actually uh, provides us with opportunity to change our education system and some experts they argue that universities right now they face the same problem as CDs in uh, last century and also uh, cable TV. So what do you think about this? What the future of universities and what the future of future workforce? So 
So maybe we will start again with round robin. So and maybe from the bottom, uh, Veronica uh, Svitech. Uh, yes, uh, truly speaking, what is about all this uh, uh, studying during quarantine, online studying? On the one hand, it is a really nice opportunity for all people in the world because uh, someone cannot see uh, someone cannot simply go to the university uh, or to school or any other uh, studying uh, institution and online studying is a really nice thing uh, for me to communicate but on the other hand as most of people have said there there is not enough communication for people on the internet and i guess our population should work for improving communication on the internet and that's all really good point veronica and uh, sophia makahin mm, yes thank you i think that it will be a great challenge to like to find out whether this online studying can win over a 600 year old tradition of uh, offline universities. So, and also I have read the statistics that around five, seven percent before the quarantine uh, finished uh, online courses. And now all of the, like this hundred percent had to do that. And as for me, I think that the biggest change would be like the mindset of the students. So for example, we all know the students who would only come to the lectures to like to have their points for attendance. But right now it is not enough to be only listener. You have to manage your study because you have to do a lot of work by yourself. And for example, also I would add about our university. For example, we begin our uh, studies already uh, tomorrow. So we will have two weeks online and two months offline and then we will finish our semester offline. And I don't know how it will be because like, you know, I care about my education and I want it to be like cool and all right, but this onla online experience is very challenging. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sofia. Uh, Alexeyevich uh, Vasilevsky. Uh, yep, yeah, actually, I have two points about it. Uh, first of all, uh, I think that um, universities are not going to change something quite drastically uh, because actually it's just uh, uh, about one year and this pandemic uh, is uh, about one year and uh, I'm not quite sure they are going to like alter something. But on the on the other hand, uh, I'm convinced that uh, they uh, they are gonna to uh, to get their education much more um, affordable um, for students from different countries and continents. Uh, even and uh, maybe this uh, and maybe they will try to uh, they will try to uh, study despite time differences. First of all, because if you talk about uh, studying abroad, for instance, Canada, they have another time, and when they have, uh, when they just wake up, I'm gonna sleep actually, and uh, I'm not quite sure how we're gonna communicate about my thesis and other issues. But I think that it will be somehow um, fixed. Uh, but uh, to to sum up, I think that all these changes, they will not be uh, taken to the extreme. And uh, I think that uh, uh, universities will find uh, some kind of congruity in building their relations with uh, students. Thank you, Alexi. Thank you. Nadia Kachmar. Yeah, pretty much um, I agree with what Sophia said. And um, I'm sorry, I just had a pure, a poor internet connection. So I think she mentioned that um, uh, we are, are starting our settings tomorrow and also that we will have four weeks of offline studying. And so 
this is what great that uh, before making this de decision to um, study uh, and uh, both um, offline and online, the univer university staff actually uh, were um, discussing the uh, discussing this problem with us. So they were giving us a lot of forms to a lot of applications, and we were answering some questions. Also, um, I'm a member of Students Parliament, and they would um, they would just um, create some meetings with us and also discuss the situation. What should we do? What shouldn't we do? And so they totally, you know, um, just. Um, they listen to us and listen to what we want, what do. Because our university is really small, we have, we don't have much students. I have, we have a bad connection. So for maybe uh, Mikhailo Petrov, can continue. Yeah, Hi. sure. Uh, I'm ready. So basically, I'm not the one who thinks uh, that uh, the university is uh, of the pandemic, because actually, it's my opinion that the university is, first of all, uh, just uh, it's, uh, the structure which unites inside the different facilities, which uh, helps us to study, which is our studying process and basically which uh, uh, gives us, uh, I mean, students and professors uh, the possibility to communicate between each other. So, and uh, this is the key to study process, as I understand it. So, uh, in these terms, I can say that I suppose that uh, university can modernize their process uh, of teaching the students, maybe Mm, they will include more uh, modern technologies in the process uh, of teaching. Uh, maybe more, uh, they will use more uh, different uh, on, online platforms, I don't know, online courses, uh, some platforms like Zoom, for example, or they will develop their own ones, uh, uh, and so on and so on. But they will remain at this place of communication where you can uh, gain new knowledge and where you can communicate to find uh, uh, the new knowledge with the others. So in this case, uh, I don't think that uh, uh, university are something uh, like the cable TV or CD discs, which are already dead. Okay, thank you. Uh, Justin, can you add something? Justin, we cannot hear you. Your voice, your, your voice level is really low. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Could you please repeat the original question? I got lost in the perspectives. Okay. The original question is about the future of universities because uh, what uh, 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 the future of universities in terms of COVID-19 because universities have not changed a lot from 16th century and uh, do uh, university await the same fate as CDs and cable TV? I think that's a very difficult question to answer, but I will certainly agree that it will require innovation of some kind. For a while now, there has been the dilemma of all the information that most universities teach, with important exceptions, most of it could already be found online if you knew how to research and find it. So then mm -hmm. that raises a question, well, what is the point of universities if I can learn it for free? Mm -hmm. And I think that's definitely gonna be a large question going forward once this is all over and everyone gets used to using the internet, but I don't know what form that will take. Thank you, thank you, Justin. Uh... Ivan Boyarchuk. Yes, um, I really uh, agree that the new wave of uh, distance learning is a good challenge for uh, society, but uh, I'm in favor of classical studying because I really like uh, the the, uh, the community uh, wh when where I'm studying. I like uh, I love 
I like to communicate with my colleagues. Uh, I like to communicate with uh, my teachers, professors, and uh, it's all about the the live uh, <clears throat> live communication because all we are humans and uh, uh, we need a live live speech. We need to see the the eye the eyes of the human to whom we are speaking. Of course, the future uh, of studying could be uh, in computers, but <clears throat> uh, I think that uh, um, the era of uh, technologies uh, doesn't give uh, uh, a good example of, uh, of human development because uh, nowadays we see that uh, people who have money uh, they will spend a lot of their uh, spend a lot of their money uh, to let their their children to study offline because uh, humans are um, social social uh, uh, social being social being social being a human is a social being and uh, it's a uh, um, resource uh, resource uh, of uh, social, uh, social being so uh, the the main uh, the main thing that i uh, would like to say um, distance studying is a good way to challenge uh, the humans but uh, i think uh, the, the, this is not uh, the way that uh, humans should develop uh, mainly Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, I know that Yaroslav, you are from opposite side, but maybe you can comment something about this from your perspective also. Okay, a few words. You know, it's a very difficult question. It's very difficult to answer it because, first of all, we don't know the answer for the main question. When will we deal with the problem which named COVID? Yeah, because we have different forecasts that we will deal in the next year, 2021, with some forecasts talking about 2025, and some uh, forecasts and talking about that it will be uh, the aspect of our modern life, and we will deal it for maybe one, not even one, for centuries, I don't know. So, of course, it will influence towards uh, universities and the system of education. Because, you know, it's really a very difficult question because some students, they have very optimistic uh, view toward universities. But at the same time, I think there will be a great transformation. Because first, look, first September, we will have a quarantine system. We will have, uh, like, with the help of different platform classes for students. In our case, I think almost all students from the second, third, or fourth courses or in from a master's program. But when we are talking about the students with, uh, who come uh, study only this year, they will begin their study in university with the help of electronic system, without uh, uh, front communication with the lecturers, with the structure of university, etc. And it's a great problem. Another case that we have uh, here, students who finished university and back our program this year. How do you think it was easier for you to pass an exam in this way and not to study the second semester in uh, our state? Of course, it's a great problem, but imagine situations that you study for this case for four years in uh, this way. As for me, it's, uh, it's a great problem for university. Secondly, look, uh, Justin uh, said about it, it's about different uh, uh, free courses and different information in internet. In our case, if you really towards this quarantine, we have a lot of different lectures and uh, courses free in internet. But at the same time, there are questions. Why students, their parents must pay for university for their education if they can get these knowledges by free from internet? What the main aim of universities in this case. Like different uh, science structures, which study some problems, yes. But what about education? Yeah, as I know, like for example, in Russia, National University is near 30,000 people. In Alberta, I looked, it's 40,000 students. 
why they must study in university if they can find their knowledge from free courses from internet. The same result. Yeah, my lecture from internet or lecture from internet from another guy who can do it with the same technologies. So also it's a great problem because uh, nowadays there are great changes in paradigma of universities and uh, a study process. The second point is that yes, if this quarantine will be for one year, it's not a problem. But when we're talking about a long distance, five, ten or more, of course there will be a great changes in university and I hope that uh, we will find a great opportunity, yes, to find this balance because between interests of students, uh, university states, and try to find a new model how to cooperate. Because from one side, I think here to represent students and lectures from a humanitarian discipline. But at the same time, we could talking about, for, for example, from medicine. How could you imagine the surgery who study his lecture from online could make a great uh, and give uh, excellent, um, and I don't know, health for example, yes, uh, with a person who have some aid. It's very difficult to study it online, as for me. Of course, I am not a doctor, so I mean in doctor like a medicine sphere, and it's very difficult for me to forecast how it will be. But of course, when we're talking about something like that, it's very difficult to predict how it will be. Or for example, points, yeah, constructors. So as for me, of course, internet is an instrument to partly solve this problem, but not an instrument to solve this problem completely. So as for me, all science community, students community must find a new way how to communicate and to call uh, to get these knowledges from the university, from the lectures, and try to do it in new forms of communication. Thanks. Thank you, Yaroslav. Really good points, really good points. And actually, it reminds me about the article which I recently read in Foreign Affairs uh, from the president. Uh, it brought uh, the president of one uh, US uh, universities that university will face probably the problem that half of our bachelor degrees will be reduced uh, because because and will be sub substituted by some certificate programs because what we need right now uh, mostly is knowledge and also certification and sometimes four year uh, program uh, is uh, something really uh, unacceptable for uh, many young youngsters. So, and let's, let's uh, move on. And Artur uh, Borsuk, I hope that this time uh, I pronounced your last name correctly. Yeah, absolutely correctly. But the only thing is that I absolutely agree with all of the statements and I'm all agree with uh, uh, Ivan Borsuk, yep. And uh, a lot of kind of like, ah, a lot of different words that they said. And uh, maybe, yes, I personally, I appreciate that uh, and I understand that we're trying to change and trying to build new connections between us and, uh, and kind of like this. And how we give is the opportunity for us, you know, they're giving us like, I don't know how to say how it giving like the true time for how to say how, it's kind of hard to say. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I absolutely agree with all of them. Thank you. And uh, Mikola Bondarenko. Uh, yeah, uh, I want to point out, I partly agreed with the uh, points of uh, Yaroslav Telesun and Mikhail Petro, uh, because uh, today, uh, when uh, all the world, uh, in different ways, but uh, challenged with the uh, COVID-19, uh, and uh, I cannot to uh, discuss this problem in the, uh, in the global cause, like, uh, uh, does... Uh, uh, Switzerland is ready for the distance learning, or does German is ready for the distance learning? But in case of Ukraine, uh, I want to point out that uh, 
as for me, uh, now uh, distance education and uh, online education at all uh, in Ukraine uh, cannot be fully replaced, um, but uh, cannot be fully replaced, but face-to-face uh, -face learning. Uh, I agree that uh, may uh, maybe in a, like an additional instrument to uh, and uh, use it for the short period of time, but not more because uh, uh, she's not uh, she's not yet technologically uh, ready for this, and uh, this is a completely different teacher method because uh, uh, as we uh, have already seen, uh, especially in uh, Ukrainian villages where uh, school children and many students even uh, don't have uh, a chance uh, to uh, have an, uh, to discuss the same problems. They have uh, they don't have an internet connection uh, and stability internet connection to uh, continue their study well and uh, continue their study productive. Because uh, uh, and uh, if we have a uh, for today, we have a distance learning for the long period of time and uh, six months. But uh, if uh, we live in a uh, megapolis uh, like Kyiv, Dnipropetrovsk, uh, Lviv, uh, we have a beautiful chance to continue our learning and uh, read, read the books, find the material to learning in the internet, find, uh, view the videos and uh, uh, switch different channels. Uh, of uh, online courses and uh, online lessons, but if we uh, if we are placed in the villages and if we don't have a stability internet connection, uh, if we uh, if we born in uh, the village which called Izum, we uh, really have a, we really get in trouble. And uh, what we must do in the in this situation, I uh, I cannot answer this question. Uh, and uh, so my position is that uh, today distance learning uh, can be uh, can be used uh, on short period of time and uh, cannot fully replace uh, the face-to-face uh, -face learning. Thank you. Thank you, Alexey Kachenko. Do you have some scratch? Um, yeah. I have something to add, and I wait uh, with time to add uh, with uh, a long period. But uh, my addition uh, will are becoming uh, more uh, complicated and uh, more um, and better. Uh, I said. Uh, this time and uh, i want uh, to add uh, next uh, what can i say about uh, future of our universities uh, caused by pandemic i can say that this future will be better uh, this is the uh, fly in the ointment of uh, since caused by pandemic uh, because uh, like you said uh, universities uh, uh, there are no uh, significant changes in universities uh, from uh, the middle of uh, previous century and uh, in our country uh, this problem is uh, more significant because uh, the any uh, significant changes uh, in our universities in in our system of education from the soviet period and uh, while uh, we students and uh, such uh, young and active uh, lectors like yaroslav uh, making everything possible to adapt uh, our educational system to new tendencies and uh, to uh, new improvements in the world. Uh, some uh, lectures, uh, not all lectures, uh, fortunately, but some lectures from uh, old period and old style of life, Soviet style, 
uh, don't want and don't uh, have opportunity to do this and uh, in some situations uh, they were ever the opponents of uh, these adaptations and uh, it is good that uh, pandemic uh, compel even them uh, to uh, change something to adapt himself and uh, the educational courses to new tendencies and even uh, old uh, members of uh, communist party in uh, past times uh, in uh, uh, during quarantine cre cre uh, created the zoom conferences the skype conferences and uh, sent uh, different uh, education information education information uh, for us uh, using email using uh, social networks and so on and uh, this is good because uh, this improve uh, our communication our understanding of uh, uh, their criteria of educational and uh, this uh, have ever have ever improved the international cooperation of our university because uh, there were uh, some events educational events during uh, uh, pandemic uh, we, on the international level for example uh, conference of our faculty uh, with participation of colleagues from uh, different countries of Europe and uh, conference of our association IFS Ukraine uh, with participation of colleagues from different branches of uh, IFS Global. So uh, we have uh, small but uh, foreseeable improvement of our educational system uh, caused by pandemic. And I hope that uh, such improvements uh, you have such improvements uh, in your countries and uh, a lot of students have such improvements uh, in their countries all over the world thank you very much for attention to my speech thank you and uh, Alexei Zahraba well, uh, I think one of the participants mentioned um, that we've been living in the old paradigm and uh, Justin can actually, um, um, I, Justin remembers our discussions about paradigms and science. Um, ultimately, there is an old paradigm that things must be done in a certain way um, in any uh, area of life. And in our case, this is education. Uh, so it's interesting to see how the old paradigm is the classroom, a teacher and the students um, writing down the lecture of the teacher. Um, and then we have an exam where students recall what they uh, heard on a wrote down in the lecture and they uh, complete their exam. So that, that is all paradigm. And now we uh, shifting paradigms where we have to think differently. Um, how do we present material in an interactive way? I have a friend in Germany uh, who was applying to become a um, I think assistant professor at the German university. And so when he presented his uh, slides, um, when he presented his educational materials, he was told that he needs to make it more interactive because uh, this is what students expect right now. Uh, they don't expect a boring lecture. Uh, they expect uh, a discussion, uh, maybe some educational videos, um, anything, that can, uh, anything that can make learning fun. And so the learning does not associate with being boring and dull. Um, so that that's that would be the next part I'm shift for um, universities um, trying to uh, appeal to students to modern students uh, generation uh, I, think, I believe my generation there is millennials and 
um, I forgot the generation after millennials. I believe the generation Z, generation mm-hmm. Z, uh, generation Z, and then there's alpha generation after generation Z. And if if universities want to earn money, uh, they need to appeal to their audiences, uh, which are growing up right now. But they have been growing up under different in a different reality, when they always have have had an access to smartphone and internet and Google. Uh, they will not want to learn in the old ways. Uh, so if, if if universities want to retain the revenues and numbers of um, of enrolled uh, and enrollment numbers, um, they eventually will have to change. At this moment, I don't see uh, I don't see this paradigm shift happening just yet, just because I, I'm yet to see how my university um, moved on, uh, is going to move online. What kind of classes will be available? Uh, format uh, different formats of classes, uh, but ultimately, um, the university still. Uh, I still act in the old paradigm. They basically they move the classroom to Zoom. Uh, that's 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 their approach to moving um, to moving the class online, which is still it's just the same thing as sitting in the classroom. We just do it in front of our computers. Uh, but for instance, my previous my professor my um, my political science professor, um, even before the pandemic, his class included online textbook, and uh, online textbook included quizzes. So you would read the chapter and then complete a quiz, uh, a quiz, testing on the knowledge. And primarily his uh, exam format was based on understanding of, um, of uh, what you, of the content. So we didn't have to retain any, um, uh, all the details about events and years when it happened and names. What we did have to do is uh, describe the impact of certain events and how it influenced the chain of events happening after that. That was a history class. Um, so he he's a bit ahead of the game. Um, I actually noticed him. Uh, he bought a green screen. Um, he posted on Facebook. He bought a green screen uh, for his background. So I'm excited to um, enroll in his online class this fall. Um, it might take a, a few years. It might take five years. It might take 10 years. But what I see is the change will happen when generations will change. So when uh, my sister, for example, is uh, she's turning 14, but in four years and five years, she will enter university and she has uh, she does not know life without Internet and she doesn't know life without her iPhone. And she will expect a uh, completely different education not the one she's presented with right now. Thank you, Alexei. And uh, the last question for today's discussion, because it was a really great discussion and we discussed different aspects of how we face the problem of COVID-19 and how universities react to this and about the anxiety level, but how students can actually help each other to overcome all these difficulties. For example, your association, your organization, IAPS, and uh, how you help your uh, peers and uh, also how your how, how students can actually help each other. So for maybe we will open this discussion to run uh, to finish today today okay so who can I start Alexei Tkachenko I see you you have a right in hand uh, okay it's necessary. is it necessary I can start uh, so uh, like I said um, I have Ukraine uh, made and uh, is making everything possible to adapt uh, our organization to activity uh, uh, during uh, pandemic uh, to activity uh, in electronic form and uh, we improve the system of our informational resources and uh, we uh, have already Mm, organize it uh, some mm, online event uh, including this uh, uh, event uh, uh, there we are uh, co-organizers and uh, we uh, made everything possible to mm, fall in uh, sphere of uh, 
informational stream of our members during quarantine. Uh, we uh, recommended to our members uh, different uh, educational opportunities during effort uh, during quarantine. Some uh, interesting uh, science, scientific events or educational events or uh, we pro provided uh, our members some interesting or um, useful uh, educational information and uh, we are we go ready and we are always ready to uh, use a new improvements and uh, new opportunities to uh, provide uh, to our members uh, the biggest uh, scale of uh, educational opportunities and scientific opportunities because uh, uh, such uh, provision is the goal of IFC Ukraine and is the goal of uh, IFC Global because uh, membership in uh, IFC Global and IFC Ukraine uh it isn't not only uh not only duty but uh, it is a for profit and uh, this profit uh, should be um, should be open and should should be should be available in uh, every condition in every situation and we uh, try we tried and we are trying to provide uh, this profit to every our our every our member in situation uh, this pandemic including this time thank you very much thank you alexi uh justin sorry for singling out you but because you are a psychology student and uh, maybe you can provide some advices how students can support each other what can what can they do justin ultimately community will be the most important thing due to the lack of physical presence with each other um it, as well in my opinion student associations and student leadership will definitely have to step up to establish these bonds, to advocate for oh, uh, students who have never been in the situation and don't know how to advocate for themselves. Okay, thank you, Justin. And I think it is uh, already a time to finish our discussion and I'm transferring the floor to Alexei. Alexei. Ah, yes. Thank you, Alexander. And just a quick question to Justin because he's actually in an uh, interesting position being a resident hall assistant at the university dormitory. Justin, how do you see the dorm life uh, going forward uh, during the pandemic? Currently, we have it set up where most returning students, based on how far they're traveling, either international or domestic, will have to spend time uh, in isolation for two weeks, during which we'll be taking care of them. As for the dormitories, places like the lobbies and the mezzanine where students would hang out have pretty much all been shut down. There is very little to no physical contact with each other. The only reason a lot of the students are staying here is it is a more convenient place for them to be. Or like myself, we have already been here to begin with. So in that sense, COVID-19 directly attacks community and our bonding with each other. And it is something that must be fought back in, in return any way we can. Because you mentioned community uh, enhancing and developing local communities, but how do you develop community uh, when the hangout places are shut down? Uh, what do you think? For those who are more comfortable being online, uh, regular meetings, regular get togethers, even just to hang out and not study schoolwork, but just to be there to bond with each other. 
um, in-person opportunities, if there's any gatherings that can happen off campus, maybe, assuming following proper social distancing guidelines and whatnot. But the answer to that is that would depend on the location and what opportunities the students have access to. Well, the only hope is um, that this is not going to stretch into 2022. Um, and eventually it's, uh, the vaccine will be distributed and we will um, uh, lead a new life uh, after pandemic. But thank you for all for coming. Um, it was nice to hear uh, Ukrainian voices uh, from around the world um, in Canada, Europe, and mm. including just, Ukra just Ukraine itself. I'm very sorry, Alexei. Uh, uh, can I uh, interfere with for a second? Uh, can me and Alexei Kachenko ask everybody to pause a little bit? We would like to make a print screen for kind of uh, the review of the event on our Facebook page. So would be yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's do that. A beautiful, remarkable photo of our event. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody pose and smile. Cheese. You say cheese. Cheese. Can we breathe? Not really. Well, let's see, have you? Yeah, I have already made the photo. And uh, can I tell a small uh, finishing vote from several sentences to sum up? Our discussion, so if it isn't a problem, I will start it. So I want to thank you very much from my personal position and position of IFS Ukraine at all. I want to thank uh, very much for every participant of our discussion today, student from different countries and continents, or even not student, but member and friend and colleague of our beautiful IAPS community. I am sure that this event help, helps us to improve our comprehension of modern processes in the world, uh, which are influencing to, influencing to education and life of uh, every one of us uh, at all. And probably this event can uh, help us to achieve uh, improving of the control of safety uh, of our life and quality of our education and our science uh, career at these difficult times. And I want to thank every participant of our discussion for achieving this result. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm looking forward for new uh, beautiful uh, meeting of us and I Ukraine uh, is looking forward to for this meeting. Thank you very much. And just to finish, also to remind you about the opportunities for students we have at the Canadian Institute of Ukrainian Studies, especially for those who are planning to study in Canada or in Alberta, and also for, for scholars from Ukraine, that we have uh, huge opportunities to fund different uh, initiatives, uh, so how as research initiatives and also provide scholarships for students. So please visit our website. So it is uh, cios.ca. So and just explore uh, our scholarships and uh, grant programs. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Alexander, for helping us to host the event. Um, for the, um, allowing us to use your Zoom subscription, as well as uh, the platform, uh, the Facebook profile, the Facebook page of uh, Canadian CIISU, uh, and uh, live streaming it. Uh, thank you for being moderator. Uh, thank you for um, everyone for coming. Thanks, Justin, for uh, answering my requests. Um, I wish you all um, uh, 
not a stressless start of the new school year. I and the, um, where, whereas you will begin your uh, studies uh, without extra anxiety about the future. Um, stay positive and hopeful. Um, we'll get through it together um, eventually. Um, and yeah, um, good night, everyone. And good day to those who are from Canada and the US. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.